So thank you for joining our Android development using Kotlin Study Jam. And um, today we are going to study more about Kotlin. And I uh, remind you that last time we tried to um, familiarize ourselves about um, Android Studio platform, the software. And today we're gonna learn about functions. And uh, as usual, Arsalan is going to share his expertise in Android development. Thank you for uh, having time to explain us basic concepts about Android development. So if you're ready, you can start. Thank you. Let me, uh, please enable the share screen option. Oh, is it visible? Yes, visible. So let me give a quick recap what we have done till now. We started with getting started with Kotlin and we installed IntelliJ on all the uh, all the tasks that were given in uh, uh, first module. So what we did was we started with installing IntelliJ and writing our first Hello Kotlin program. And then after, after that, we in our second week, we covered Kotlin basics. And in this, uh, all the operators and types we covered. And then we covered booleans and conditions. Then we learned about loops and nullability. We learned about arrays, list and loops. And this was all about our second and third week. And during our fourth week, we, we got familiar with Android Studio environments, uh, how to install Android Studio and how to use it. So if anyone of you have tried and if you encountered any problem, you can share. Uh, sorry, uh, Arsalan, uh, you told me to wait for the great, great something. So it took a lot of time and I left my computer overnight, but still it didn't update completely. So I haven't checked since then. Uh, I will try to open, but somehow it took very long time, I think. Maybe not completely. You, <laughs> so I'll check right now. You you try once again, and if it doesn't install, then you can try installing Android Studio again, or I would guide you in it. No problem. Today we would start with uh, uh, we start with functions, and I, Aisha, you just try to create a project once, and while we are having a class, let it run on a background and see what happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today would we would be starting with function, or we can discuss the installation process uh, later on during week. Mm -hmm. so, um, you just create. I think installation was fine. The problem occurred while creating a project. Yes. You just create the project once again, and let's start with uh, and all the things. Just leave it running in background. And today we, we would be starting with functions. So let's start with uh, what is function. Function, as the name suggests, function. Function is basically uh, we define a separate block in our code that that does something. Function basically, as the name suggests, it means it has particular functionality in the code. This is what function means. So uh, if we go by a definition, then we can check the definition. What is function? What is? You can see here, we would go to function. Programming it, it went to match function. So a function is a block organized code that is used to perform a single task. As I said, it 
it is assigned a task to do in our program dependency is another it is a wikipedia link this is what the function is so let's start with function explore the let us open our project in intellij the project which we created earlier so let us start our task uh, task 2 is uh, we write this function this was already given in the program when we created a project there was something written as this hello world or something like that uh, have you all opened opened this page Uh, so yes, again this cradle, cradle build, mm -hmm. and uh, there are some uh, errors. I don't. Yeah, know. that error I, I, I also. In, you are not able to open that project, right? Uh. Mm, if no, I show maybe. you, if I show you what the error is, I'm waiting. I'm sure. Let's see no uh, this this kind of error it's showing right um no it's different but uh, something has gradle sync issues the yeah, yeah. here location is not set and it's still thinking or thinking yes and building so oh, i don't know oh could you have uh, not installed the intellij part correctly so let it was in our first module or to so let me go there no actually and, i think on my laptop before i hmm. tried and it was installed correctly i could load Ah, uh, then okay. there is not enough space on my laptop, so I try to do now on computer, desktop, mm -hmm. and this cannot. <laughs> this has some so errors. Can you beginning. can you present your screen? Ah uh, yes. Today. Okay. Ah, so you see like this. Mm -hmm. So no. this is building, and mm -hmm. this is something okay. failed. Okay. So here you are opening Android Studio. I was saying, so uh, let's just leave it in the background. We will encounter this issue later. Let's start with IntelliJ for now. Sorry, I don't understand. Okay. Okay. Uh, no problem. No problem. I was just saying. And there, there is there any error in Gradle? Build. So, uh, do you recommend just uh, for this study session to mm. use IntelliJ only? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because in Android Studio, it it's a platform for creating an application. Yeah. We would not be able to run basic programs like. If we want to print "Hello World," yeah. then we would have to uh, put it in the screen of our mobile application to print "Hello World." Yeah. So it, for it will, those yeah. who might uh, be confused, like Asha, for example, so today you don't need to use Android Studio. Android Studio. Yeah, you You're don't need because with... we are not going to continue uh, mm -hmm. last session like building uh, mm -hmm. apps, simple apps. Today we are uh, continuing learning Kotlin. And we use IntelliJ for Kotlin, mm -hmm. so we can just mm -hmm. open IntelliJ, and we're gonna uh, address the problem of Android Studio later. I think maybe this week or yeah. next session when we are going to continue building apps. Mm -hmm. 
and Aisha for now let me teach you it's an important concept uh, how we if we encounter any error then how how do we get try how do we get the solution for that it's basically for any program what we do is we try to read the for example this error is showing we try to read the error what it's saying and by chance if we don't don't get any part what i simply do is i copy this error and uh, i paste this on chrome and there must be someone who has encountered this error before and it's 99 out of 100 times that that error you would find it on stack overflow so what you do is you just go down and uh, look for the answers and try what they are saying to do this is main the main process behind solving any issues in the code for example if we don't know and how to use stack overflow so this is what we do while uh, encountering any error we just paste it and open the stack overflow link there must be someone who has faced the same issue so you would get the answer 99 times out of 100 so let's start with building our new project uh, so today we are starting with function so as i said the function in the name suggests uh, as the name suggests it means uh, we define something to it and uh, it does the particular thing in our code for example i if i create this function if i create a function name print hello world not in here uh, this function is to write it in uh, our repl and when i say print hello what it did uh, uh, function print hello and what's uh, in this scope we define what we are doing in function then we, it is said uh, in this function it is said to print hello world and when i call this function outside here i call this function print, the name of function was print hello and when i call this function it printed hello world because it, it was assigned to print hello world here so this is what function is and let's create uh, uh, we have already created our project previously so let us open our project and take a look at it we go to our project and you there must be a screen like this uh, we go to src and we go to main and then we go to kotlin and we go to main kotlin file let us all open and see if there is any issue or anything Uh, this project I am talking the, uh, about the first week when we started, when we printed Hello World in Kotlin. So all of you have opened it. Yes. So, let's, let's start from, so what what is this saying? We add add your code. I think this code must be written previously. Is it written hello world there? And these lines are are they written there? Or any other thing in this file? What is what is it showing? the same thing that that is shown on my screen or anything else anyone is this file same in all your systems it's same mm -hmm. so let's try to uh, get what these lines are so we started with function then main then here is a here is a symbol here is a word written ARGS 
we don't know what this means and then here uh, we have studied this in our previous uh, previous lab previous to previous lab array of strings i think we are familiar with this the only part we are not getting is this one args so let let us try to understand what this means args means argument uh, and using this in function means uh, it, it let us see furthermore this is the main part and then this is the main and this is a args means arguments so what argument is uh, when we uh, when we created a variable variable uh, for example we created variable f is equals to 5 so what this 5 was argument to variable f this is what argument is this 5 was argument which was passed to variable f which was assigned to the variable f so here argument and this is to is to symbol so this is saying that we are creating a function main which which contains argument of uh, st strings array of strings arguments of array of string this is what if we don't write this then also our code would be fine there wouldn't be any problem in our code when i run this again it won't show any error to turn or fine Let's, let's close this ripple and let's see this code ran absolutely fine without this part but let's try to understand what this is this is our hello world without this and if we run it again it would do the same thing hello world now what is this argument argument here means uh, we are we can pass any argument in in the in the, in this function with a command line let us uh, please re read step 3 all of you then i would explain what this means Have you all read steps? I think you have read step three. And let, let's do let's do what they are saying. So I would click to run. Click on run. I would go and click on run. And then I would go on edit configuration. And they are saying to put in argument Kotlin here. So I would put Kotlin here. And an explanation. And they are saying instead of this world. Uh, let's change this program to this I, I would explain this but for now let's try to do what they are saying so what I what they said that you go to run and then you go to edit configuration and in in place of program argument where it was empty you wrote Kotlin there and then you clicked ok and you you uh, convert change the wor word world to this part what the program written and when i run this program it would show hello kotlin this kotlin is getting printed from the argument that i passed here this is the same kotlin argument zero now let us try to get what this was uh, argument basically is uh, uh, if Previously it was written world there and now it changed now if when I change it to argument zero it it is showing hello Kotlin. So what this what happened just here was uh, argument we we assigned a string in command line. This was the configuration. We assigned a string in command line and this string was assigned to this uh, a concatenate added to this string during runtime. 
I, you must have heard something about run time and compile time. So what compile time and run time is? Compile time is this one. So before compilation, we assigned hello world. We wrote the string fully. And uh, run time was, we didn't assign it during compilation. When the program was run, so what it did, what it, it checked where the argument zero is. So in this, in this uh, IntelliJ platform, edit configuration, argument was passed in here. It's basically argument is used to pass command line values. Uh, there must be many doubts coming in your mind why we are doing this instead of just writing Kotlin here. Why we did this? We could have just written this, it would do the same thing, nothing different. So the difference come, comes when we want to pass something from a command line. Command line is this. If I go to any other platform, if, uh, if, if you have any doubt, you can say, then I would be much more clearer. There was be many doubts coming. Hello, did you get any part of it? What the argument is? Yes, yes. Let us see from any other uh, online platform. Let us search for online Kotlin compiler. So I would open any compiler here. So let's see in here. Same thing. We copy this code. We paste it here and argument zero. We write argument zero that we want to print Kotlin and we write it in command line argument. So command line argument does is uh, take the string or during run time when the program is running. So when I run this program, when I execute, execute this program, it would print hello Kotlin. Hello. So now let us uh, take an example where it can be helpful. For example, if we want to catch any error in our code, uh, for example, uh, as we saw previously that Aisha was encountering an error a problem problem in a code and it was showing. And instead of uh, uh, finding it, if we want that, we want to print that error in our program. So what we would we have done? We would get catch the error because the argument is in command line. That means a command line in different platform in different thing. In here, the command line is here, the terminal, and it was showing error here. So we can catch error using it is the one application of argument. We can we can use it in. Uh, use the argument of array of string for catching uh, errors in our program and there are many more applications this is not much used for uh, but you just remember this part that if you create a main function in a, in your program you just write these lines just remember this part function main argument array of strings this is, these are the lines you write in your program when you create a, a main function. So if you got any doubt in module 2, then please say. Uh, please go through module, uh, this whole module and see if, if you have any problem in it.
have you have you all gone through all this all the steps hello have you read all these steps yes so let's let's uh, let's try to know what this zero zero is so as in this function we said that we want to pass argument of array of strings that uh, it would take a array of strings as an input in this argument this is what this line is and this zero is the index of that array so here when we define here when we define kotlin it was placed at the index 0 if we want another word to be uh, placed at index 1 then i would write uh, uh, i would give a space there and i would write index 1 there and when i click on apply when i click on okay now if i want to print if i write it again print In index in, instead of index zero, if I print index one, then it would print me the second part. See, what uh, I've let us again check the configuration. So it was an array of strings. This was the zeroth index, and then I gave a space, and this was the first index. And as it said, it is printing zeroth index here. Hello, Kotlin, and the first index here. This is how we print argument in a, in a function. Function. It is never used, but we try to learn this concept in future. And I think you would never use this argument part until you develop full, fully fledged applications. Other than that, you would never use that part. So let's start with another uh, module here. learn why almost everything has a value go go through all this i there is nothing to explain in this module read it and i think you would get it. please read it Did you all go through all these steps? Uh, so I think I cannot follow because uh, it's also building something in IntelliJ. I cannot do anything. So I sorry. I think sorry, I cannot follow. 
I think I missed the beginning. I think the beginning. So, yeah, the third module, I, are you seeing the third module or the previous one which I explained, Aisha? Sorry, I don't know module. Uh, 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 this, it's this, just running uh, this. and... Are you talking about this one? What problem are you having? Can you please? Uh, because now I just install IntelliJ now and it takes some mm -hmm. time. Also building something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I cannot okay. follow this task. But... Oh, okay, okay. You just read all this and if you get any doubt in it, then please. Yeah. Okay. You just read and I, I think you would be get, Are you getting these? what they are trying to say if you ha are having any doubt in these modules then you can ask so let me explain few quotes for you for example if i go through all this code uh, value is unit print ln this is an expression and println is unit in this code what happened when i when i when i run run this in REPL, what will, what will happen is So what happens here is, uh, if we simplify this code furthermore, and instead of defining it in somewhere else, what I would do is, uh, what happened here is, is unit, the first, when the first is unit was called, it printed, this is an expression, it printed what the uh, program was showing, and uh, in the second print ln here, what it did was it printed is unit kotlin dot unit means it's a kotlin unit kotlin has defined many class it is a unit in kotlin class so this is what it is saying if you read this uh, second line run your program the first line prints a, a string this is an expression and the second line print ln prints the value of the first print ln statement that is kotlin unit so this is what it is saying and then uh, furthermore when i go it is it is it is saying uh, what this code says is value temperature is 10 and value is hot if temperature greater than 50 true else false so what it is saying is that first we assign our the temperature to be 10 and we check if temperature is greater than 50 then uh, is hot is true else is hot is hot is false so it would print is hot false because temperature is 10 and the condition is if temperature is greater than 50 then is hot is true else is hot is false so th this is how we read the code and this this is basically what the output would be same goes for here value temperature is equals to 10 value message is the water temperature is and this dollar is dollar sign is used to print the variable in in a string if temperature greater than 50 too warm else okay so what would it print its value it values is 10 so it would print okay because temperature is not greater than 50 it is 10 it is less than 50 so that water temperature is okay the water temperature is and this is a variable that will check and it will print okay this is how we read the uh, code and this is the second module and we go to the fourth module Le uh, learn about learn more about functions so if i read read this code what uh, what i said in function we define as we define a function somewhere else and we call it in our main function and it does a task that is assigned to it so function 
So I copy this function and paste it here. So what it is doing? Oh, random day we have not defined. So this will show us function feed the fish is uh, value its value is day and it is calling another function. This bracket is means it's calling another function called random day. And if I go through this error, it will show unresolved reference. This means that random day is not defined in our program. So we need to define this. And then value food is pellets. Today is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is basically uh, this part was not defined in. Let uh, if we, if I say like this, then you you get this part that it would consider it as a string, and it would print string in here. Are you getting this part? It would just okay. print day here. Yes. Sir. Yes. So we we need dollar sign because we have defined this day here, random day. So we call this and in the previous example, uh, for example, in case if, if we don't want to define the day here or instead what I want to do is I just want to call this random day here. I don't want another string named this. So this would do the same thing. See? This is doing the same thing. Okay. Now, now let me get to the previous part. Here, what uh, what this uh, program is saying? Va variable message: the water is if temperature greater than fifty, then you you need to print true warm or it is okay. So what I would do is I I would create another variable. If temperature is and I would remove this condition from here. Okay, I would just remove the whole condition from here. This part and I would assign this to somewhere else. Value of variable variable condition. Now here I would call the condition. So it would do the same thing. Let's run this program. It would print the water temperature is function A. Wait a minute. Water temperature is function. What that is it on? So if I run this now it would run fine. Mm -hmm. 
what there is what there is why is it not the same Able to get the problem here. Uh, let me check again for now. Now let us skip this part. I, I will get back to you on this. But there is problem assigning here. But what your question was why where we are using this dollar sign? We are okay. using this do, dollar sign I got, here. I got the point. Thank you. Uh, there here a problem is coming because we we are in a here what i was doing was i was writing a condition i removed a whole code from here and i assigned a variable to it condition and this condition is called a pass string to on and as it's printing okay and when i call this here it would print to warm or okay are you getting that point abdullah so the problem in the code yes. here is i'm i'm not able to initialize it because it is a loop here it is a condition here and for this condition to work i need to initialize it to condition i would have to check uh, how we initialize a condition in kotlin okay 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 so here it is a part yeah. here no So this is what uh, this is just the same thing that we did previously and then we go to fourth one so go through fourth one the, the fourth the second part is also same thing in here but just the thing is we are using the when loop that we studied instead of if else or a for loop just go through this part i think it it will all will be covered Thank <laughs> you. 
Have you all gone through all the this? Have you all gone through all the modules? No. Step four. Okay, okay. If you have any difficulties, we can um, discuss together. No, let's go through all the modules and I'm just trying to figure out something in the code. So why is it not printing my if else condition? Till then just go, okay. just go through all the, these parts.
Okay. The problem was uh, share my screen. Abdullah. The problem the problem just here was I was using curly braces here. That's why it was uh, printing function zero there instead of printing okay or anything else. So the questions as you can see here. Because I was using using curly braces here, it was instead of pr printing the condition to be too warm or okay, it was treating it as a function and printing it function zero. So the problem was just with the curly braces here and here. Now it would run fine. Uh, okay, the temperature is okay. So if it it is too it is greater than fifty it is it would assign too warm to it else it would assign okay to it and because I was using using curly braces here it was it was printing function zero instead of okay that was the zero at function here. And your dot must be clear, Abdullah, why you are using the dollar sign instead of this. And and in here, and then you must ask that why in here the dollar curly braces was present. If I remove this and I put it again, it again in here, then you would you would say that here this curly braces was used. But previously we didn't use this just because if I remove this curly brace, it would think that only if is a variable. Other than that, it would again try to think what this why is a another string defined in a string. Just here again, there was there will be a problem why there are two strings defined in a string. If I check the error, unexpected an exception an expression. Keyword, keyword cannot be used and this all reference to these are the error that were coming with the previous code which I was trying to give an example and I, con I encountered this and that dot which you got that must be clear that must have been clear in the dollar sign yes thank you yeah so yeah. to Call to make a function inside a string, we can use dollar sign and curly brackets. It was it was not a function. It was a inside a string. If we want to call any variable or anything, that we don't want to, yeah, uh, to treat it as a string. For example, yeah, uh, if, hmm. I mean, uh, to only call a variable uh, or value, we can use dollar sign anything we can call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's why we are using dollar sign. We had covered till uh, uh, lab, lab four, lab four uh, module four, and the remaining four modules we would cover in our next class.
so do you, do you have any doubt anyone There is no questions, and then we can finish this session today. Thank you for joining this session. And uh, next week, we are going to uh, again uh, switch it to uh, app. app. Okay. And see you next week. Bye -bye. Yeah. Bye. I. Aisha, did you hear it all or is it still there? Uh, no, I closed because um, I think I don't have enough space. Um, okay. So Zoom starts to lag and I cannot hear you well. So I just closed. I will try to okay. find uh, Is there a problem with on Android Studio or IntelliJ? Uh, both of them because for mm -hmm. the IntelliJ also we need mm -hmm. some space. Okay, and for Android Studio, if the problem is still that, and then try to uninstall everything and try to install it again. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, your IntelliJ was.